Hey crafty family, it's me. Um, today I have decided that I want to show you guys how I made these ATC cards. Um, <clears throat> which are actually, well, they're not all completed. I didn't finish them all. Um, I finished this one. And you can see it's got the painted background. Then it's got a die cut bird on a branch, which I embossed it. Um, with embossing powders and then the other one I did was this one and I put a sparkly bird on the branch and put love um, those are the only two I actually completed um, and I still want to ink the edges and stuff I still haven't finished these completely but like I'm gonna put words on them maybe like you know something I don't know uh, I kind of don't want to I kind of maybe just want to put the words and maybe that's it because I love the background so much that I don't want to cover that up completely so I was just gonna show you those but I'm also gonna show you how we do them um, it's pretty easy and it's a lot of fun I wish I would have gotten those finished but I just didn't get them finished and I really wanted to show you how I did them because I know that you guys would enjoy this because it's a lot of fun it was a very fun process so also I was going to show you real quick just a little show and tell as well um, of let's see of some if I can get them out of some I found my jelly plate my small one now this one I made probably six months ago and it's still fine um, I'm probably going to melt it down when I melt down the big one and just refresh them up but I found it and it was just sitting in, on a shelf with stuff on top of it and it was still fine it still worked fine so I decided to use it and of course when I use it I take my brayer and I brayer off in this book um, which ends up being colorful and yummy and eventually I'll you know do something with it I'm sure so anyway I made some postcards mostly I made some that, uh, that weren't postcards like these few on top because they were scrap pieces from cutting my postcards and so these are like almost like a little ATCs like oversized ATCs I guess so I got those out of it which were kind of fun but the postcards I got um, are like these I'll do a real quick show and tell I the first batch I did was like yellows and teals and pinks um, just some squiggly lines very basic so I can add something on it like stamping or something like that um, <clears throat> stamping washi tape stickers something like that and then these were a little bit more bold and colorful and I love these I think they came out so awesome there's that one this one's one of my favorites this one's like my definite favorite right here I love that one I love all the colors and the way that came out but I think they all came out really cool and you know I don't know they're different sizes so I'm calling them postcards but um, but yeah there's some really cool prints in here and these were all done on my jelly plate and some stencils some basic some stencils and I don't know um, I'll probably decorate them maybe in another video um, but anyway that's unrelated to what we're doing today I just thought I'd show them to you because I thought you'd think they were pretty because I thought they was pretty okay so today what you're going to need to do this project is a piece of material now you might think that this was canvas um, but it's not it's actually a piece of material and I did it in a big sheet I painted it and then I cut it up and put it on uh, cardstock or um, chipboard so what I used and this is exactly what I used I have this material that I had gotten from the creative reuse and I have a lot of it I bought a huge it's a six foot roll of this material they were just like when I went to go look at it the lady was like well you know we can cut it or you could just take the whole thing and I stood there and I thought about it and I thought about it, like do I really and then I realized it's pink it's a good material I know I'll use it for a lot of things and I thought of painting I can use it as like a canvas because it's like um it's probably a rayon and cotton blend and it's very dense the fibers are very dense on it so it's like fairly thick this would be almost like um, curtain fabric or something I would imagine I don't know I don't know what kind of fabric it is it's just typical I, I know it's not anything like ridiculous but you can use pretty much anything as long as it's not super thin 
And even if it is super thin, you can use it. You just might have a little bleeding underneath. So I'm going to put some drop paper down or something. Um, so I'm going to use this and I'm just going to square this off and cut it, uh, cut it to size. Cause right now it's a pretty big piece. It goes all the way down into my lap. Um, and I'm going to cut myself off a piece and it's going to become like a loose canvas basically. It's not going to be like a mounted canvas, um, obviously. And that's how we're going to use it. We're going to use it as basically as a canvas. And I save like these strips that I'm cutting off, like I'll save that. I have like a scrap thing. Let me see how big I want to do it. Maybe I'll do it like that. I'll cut a slit in there and then I'll turn it and cut it and it has like little lines on it like in the pa there's like a slight pattern of like in this like a tone on tone kind of pattern to it um it's a nice fabric i you know i i, have, I can use it for all kinds of little things like making journals and actually i did make i took a piece of the thing i forgot to show you i took a piece of it of the painted fabric and of course on this one I took another piece of fabric and heat bonded it to the other side to make myself a faux dory. Um, I'm just waiting I have some elastic coming to me so I'm waiting for that so I can install the elastic and then make myself some little books and then I'll show you guys how to do it and maybe I'll use a piece of this when I make it um, to show you how but it came out really cute and so that's gonna be my cute little faux dory and that's an idea you can do with this um okay so we have our piece and don't worry if you got like frayed edges it's no big deal now i really like the neon colors i haven't worked with neon colors in a long time but you can use whatever colors you want i'm going to use more neon colors it's not going to come out exactly the same no two are ever going to be the same so you don't have to worry about that so you can use all the exact same colors a hundred times and it's probably always going to be different so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some gesso. And yes, I had transferred my gesso into plastic jars. I got my plastic jars in because I, I've got so many orders for gesso that I had to use plastic jars because the glass jars were really expensive to ship. So these, je these jars are really nice because they're wide mouth. So you can get your brush in there, no problem. But I don't have the problem in the lid where it was rusting um, because it's not metal. So anyway. So that's what I did. So I'm going to give my gesso a little mix because I haven't used it in probably a week or so. So I'm just going to give it a little mixing out if it splatters on here. I don't give a crap because <laughs> I'm just going to paint it anyway. So just mixy mixy. That's what you got to do with homemade gesso. You just got to give it a little mix before you use it. I mean, I could have shake, you know, shook it, but I'd rather, I'd rather mix it. I have my special little mixing stick that I keep around for my gessos and such. I do this to my gesso and my homemade Mod Podge glue. I keep a stick around for that. And then what I'll do is I'll just take my stick rather than doing anything else. And now this will soak up a lot of gesso because unlike a canvas that usually comes pre-gessoed, it's not. So, and I only put one coat on. So I put one decent little coat on and that was perfectly fine. It's just, you're not gonna get very far with it. You're gonna get like three inches with every brush, which is fine. Um, especially, you know, I'm making homemade gesso, so it's not really that big of a deal. Yeah, these jars are, these are, this is the 16 ounce jars. I also have eight ounce jars. Um, so they work out well. I really like those jars. At least I, I'm crossing my fingers that they stayed working out well because they were a good price. So I couldn't beat the price and I definitely needed something else besides glass jars, which were, I mean, because shipping, I mean, this is heavy. This is not light. So imagine adding to it a glass jar that's almost the same weight <laughs> as the liquid I'm putting inside of it that ended up making shipping, you know, it was actually hard on me because I was not charging extra for the shipping because of the container. So now, you know, it'll be easy. I was pay actually paying extra for shipping because I didn't want the, 
my the people that were ordering from me to have to bite the bill for the glass jar because it's not their fault that I only had glass jars <laughs> so I ended up you know it ended up costing me money a little bit but it you know but now it'll be better because now it'll equal out where when I charge shipping it'll actually be the right cost because I'm not using glass anymore and why am I rambling on about this nobody cares anywho whatsoever so yeah it's fun to just slap paint on things and that's basically what we're going to do throughout this whole thing is just be slapping some paint but the first step is this and then we need to let it dry and it needs to dry completely you can use your heat gun so that's an option I'm pro the edges of it might be out of camera range but that's okay I'll change that um, it's a, I mean, it's not like you need to see every ounce of what I'm painting. It's just the material, and I will fix the camera angle when we go to paint with the color so that you can see what I'm doing better. Right now, I'm literally just slapping this on, and that's all you need to do. Just as sloppy as you want. Just get it covered. And what's going to happen is, when this dries, it's going to feel like canvas. You're going to be like, holy crap, that feels like canvas because um, that's what's going to happen. Also, another good thing to use, denim. So if you have pairs of jeans that you don't, that don't fit, your kid's jeans, your husband's jeans, whatever, grab a pair of jeans, cut the leg, open it up, and there's your, there's your material. And, you know, that's the perfect material to use, too. It's nice and heavy. It'll take the paint well. And it's nice and thick it'll hold up real nice so that's definitely a good option you can also get you know denim at the thrift store go to the thrift store and especially if they have a half off days or something like that you know you can get a pair of jeans for a dollar or two take them home and cut them up and you won't feel so bad so I am lucky I have quite a few pairs of jeans that I had gotten over the past you know couple of years that I've been holding on to that I use I make flowers out of them I've done pocket letters with denim um, I think in another video I might have painted denim I can't remember <laughs> I've done a lot with with denim stuff because denim's great it's great 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 okay this is all painted I believe and I've made a mess and that's okay mess is good mess is good mess means you're creating if you're not making a mess well you could still create but I feel like it's more free when you make a mess because you can always clean it up later and you know me I'm very neat freaky everything my desk has always got to be clean there might be a lot of stuff on it but it, the desk itself is usually clean is it just me or does anybody else notice that when you do something with fabric or something you get these little black hairs and I don't want to say what they remind me of, but that's what, like exactly what you're just thinking I just said. Like that's what they remind me of. Like these little black curly hairs are on my fabrics. Every time. I don't know where they're coming from. Nobody in this house has black hairs. I don't have any animal. I mean, Tigger has black hair. But his hair doesn't shed and it's not, it's not poodle hair. That's what I mean. Like I don't know where they're coming from. Does anybody else have this issue? Anybody. Where like you'll get a piece of material out and you'll start arting or something with material or something, anything. And you'll just find these little black hairs. Or am I losing it? It's happened for like years. I need a baby wipe. My hands are dirty. And I gotta shut my jar. That's another thing with homemade gesso. or Well, with any gesso, not homemade gesso. You always want to like wipe the lip of your jar before you put your lid on. Um, that will prevent the lid from sticking or you could take some Vaseline and put it around the lid which I haven't done yet and usually I do but it helps it from you know your lids getting stuck because that'll happen no matter what gesso you use store-bought homemade doesn't matter you always want to close everything up tight okay so let's let this dry I will come back when the sucker is dry and ready to be painted on so go get yours ready and let's go. Let's get to it, Missy. Get working. <laughs> I'll be back in a few. Okay, so I'm back. And I've got this dry. 
And I don't know if you can see it, but there's these little tiny, tiny, tiny black hairs. There's one there. Don't mind my messy nails all filled with paint. But there's a few of them all over the place. I just don't know where they come from. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They're going to get painted over. Oh well. Okay, you're going to take a credit card. You can do it with a brush if you want to. I found that credit cards work best. Here's all the fluorescent paints that I own. Some of them are fabric paints. And that's another thing. You do not need fabric paints. You can use perfectly fine with acrylic paints unless you plan on washing this. Which obviously if we're making it into ATCs or journal covers or whatever, you're not going to wash it. So we're just going to treat it like canvas. And you wouldn't wash your canvas. So I'm going to use this color green, which is kind of fluorescent-y. It's like a very bright, like, um... Granny Smith Apple. This is like a really bright fluorescent yellow, a fluorescent green, another fluorescent green. We got fluorescent pink and these have like a these have like a sparkle in it, which shows up pretty cool. Fluorescent -y orange. Then there's this kind of bluey color, which isn't super fluorescent. And then there's like a purpley fluorescent color. Let's see. I got the orange and then there's like this red color which is just a red color I think but I don't know if I'll use that no I'm saying I want the green with the sparkle because I like the green with the sparkle better I like the sparkly paint I don't know which one is which it's hard to see on some of them oh here's a lighter color blue everything I need so basically I'm gonna move these aside I'm gonna start with we'll start with the fluorescent yellow which is open yet I got these for 50 cents or 25 cents and they were meant for these are meant it says leather and vinyl I just use them for whatever they were cheap I'm just gonna use them however I want and basically I just take some I put it on the card like so and I just start going around randomly and marking random spots on the fabric. This is kind of a thinner paint. This is really fluorescent. I don't know if it shows up on camera. I have no idea. But let me tell you something. <laughs> it is bright. Holy crap, that's bright. That's hurting my eyes bright. But that's okay. That's what I want. I want bright. Now we're going to go with this green because it's a sparkly green. If I can get it out. Oh, it might have one of those things I need to open. I might not have used it yet. Nope. Apparently not. These were like a quarter, I think. Um, but these are fun paints to use. They're a little bit more sheer than some of the other paints, but they're sparkly, so it's kind of like a nice trade-off. I don't mind the sheer, because sometimes I'll go over it twice if I have to. But I really like the sparkle. The fact that they sparkle because it shows up after everything I do. It shows up in my cards. Like I'll see if I can find one where you can see it. Like this one, the pink and the orange are sparkling. I don't know if that shows up. But it's kind of cool. It's groovy. I dig it. But I haven't worked with fluorescent paints in a really long time. So it was kind of cool to, you know, finally get them out and decide to play with them a little bit. Okay, now we'll do some orange. And this again is a sparkle orange. Fun, fun, fun. And I'm just kind of randomly putting it on, overlapping it a little bit with the other colors. Like, you know, like I said, no rhyme or reason here. Just slapping on color for no reason. I kind of put them next to each other just to build color. If you're afraid something's going to get muddy, 
then just hit the heat gun on it and dry it a little bit before you continue. And that'll help. Because we're obviously going to have to go back on the colors a few times. Now I'm going to do fluorescent pink. Which this one's my favorite. Which of course, maybe I have another one that's open. Yeah, I think this one's open. Yeah. Because I bought a couple that were duplicates. They were like a quarter. And actually, I think they were cheaper than that. Because I think, and I got these a long time ago. I think they ended up being like 10 cents a piece by the time I got up to the register. So, I remember buying a bunch of them because they were so cheap. You can't beat it. And they're pretty colors. Not everybody likes fluorescent colors, I get that. And, and if you don't like fluorescent colors, don't use fluorescent colors. You can use whatever your heart desires, my friend. I just dig the fluorescent colors really a lot. Okay, then we've got this fluorescent green. Oh, we already used the fluorescent green. Well, I'll just go back over a couple spots. I forgot that we used that one already. I'm getting it way ahead of myself. I always keep a t-shirt rag. I just got a bunch of new ones. Chris brought upstairs a bunch of t-shirts. He says, do you want them before I throw them away? And I was like, gimme, gimme. <laughs> All right, we're gonna use this apple green. It's not really technically a fluorescent, but and actually I'm gonna use a palette knife for this one. I've got this fat palette knife that'll thankfully fit in there. So I'm just gonna use that to go in some spots. Scrape it on. It's not as bright as the other colors, but I don't, you know, I do want some contrast. But it's still bright. I mean, it still fits in with the theme. Trust me. Trust me. My fabric shifts. Don't shift fabric. See, and now we're getting to the point where we're almost filling in um, some empty areas. I think that's all I'll do for that right now. Oh, I gotta clean my bolt. My water dish is a mess. And the back of my hand is not any better. I didn't do the blue, so we'll do the blue. I don't know if I, yeah, I've opened this one. Where'd my card go? There it is. So we'll fill in the remaining spots with the blue. And then go back with any other colors. Oh yeah, I got a purple, I think, too, I want to use. So we'll do blue, and then we'll do purple. See how the blue is a totally different... Gives it a totally different look because it's not as... You know, it's not a fluorescent color. So that's why I'm using it more towards the end, more sparingly. I still... I, I want it because I want that contrast of that blue against the fluorescent. But... I want the majority of these paints to be um, the fluorescent colors. But I'm just adding a few here and there. I'm even just going over some, just like that. And now I'm gonna grab this one, which is a purpley color, which I don't think I've used yet. Nope. It's like a more purpley pink. Yeah, it's definitely like a purple color. It's not even pink, it's purple. <laughs> I thought from the bottle it looked like it was more of a purpley pink or pinky purple. It's all good and it's it's a it you know fluorescent purple is a hard color to get. It's hard to get a, a good true fluorescent purple. I've never really found one like this is not a great fluorescent purple, but it is a nice purple and is it sparkly? Mm, I don't think so. I think the only sparkle ones were the green the orange and the pink 
were the only sparkly ones. We're coming to the point here where we are running out of open space. So when we get to that point, soon we'll have to let this dry. See, so I'm just going through and now I'm just putting like some randomly not so random lines. I try to cover everything because I'm ridiculous, but you don't really need to do this anal of a job covering everything. It's all going to get covered up with the next step anyway. So if you have a few open spaces, don't sweat it. Like seriously, don't sweat it. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm pretty good with that. Um, trying to think where else do I want to throw some purple before I commit to this. Maybe I'll put a little bit in here. I just want to keep a good um, running evenness of purple. My random not so randomness. My not so randomness. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let this dry completely to move on to the next step. So you can hit it with your heat gun or you can walk away like I usually do, take a break, and we'll come back to it in a little while. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's dry. As you can see, nice dry. And now I've got a stencil and I'm gonna use, uh, start with like a bigger stencil and then move my way down to smaller stencils and things like that or stamps or whatever I wanna use. And I'm going to use some, uh, I'm gonna use my Pouncy stencil brush and the stencil from Deco Arts, um, which is called Ba, 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 traditional medallion and I want to use this one here and I'm just going to do some random of this with dilutions pink last time I used the purple on these and I did a different stencil thing um, I love these paints so much for stenciling and I've had the entire set of Dilutions paints in my Amazon cart because you can get it for like $57. You can get the entire set of these paints. And on top of it, um, they're coming out with more colors this year. I don't know when, but soon, I guess. But I've had it sitting in my cart forever. <laughs> I go in there every now and again and I'm like, oh, I'd love to have all of them because the colors are so awesome. I love these paints so much. These were gifted to me in Happy Mail. And yes, they, they are my babies. I don't really use them. I use them just here and there. I love using them for stenciling. That's like the best. So I'm going to use them. I'm going to use what's in my lid. And I'm just going to pounce on, which is what this brush is for. It's meant to pouncy, pouncy on the color. If I had the other paints, I'd probably do more colors, like the dilutions. So if you have more, if you have like dilutions paints and you have a few, I'd probably stencil with mostly all of those for this. Um, just because they go on with one coat. You don't have to go over it. It gets nice and dark. And I mean, the color is just amazing. I don't know if you can see that, but it's such an amazing color. Um, I just love it. And, and you got to keep in mind that we're going to be cutting this up. I mean, obviously you don't have to, you can use it for something. I mean, if you have something to use it for, you know, like, um, you know, uh, yeah, I could speak. Like if you're going to use it for a journal or, you know, whatever you want to use it for. But I'm likely going to cut this. I'm going to make another small Midori. Um, and then use the rest for ATCs like I did the other one. And I might, I don't know, depending on how that Midori goes, I might keep it, I might sell it, I might give it away. 
flippity floppity flingity flangity. I don't know. I don't know. Depends on how it comes out. You know. I'm waiting, like I said, waiting for my elastic. And then once I get that one put together, maybe I'll do, ooh, that's what I'll do. I'll use the piece that I cut from this to make the Midori and I'll do it on camera and I'll make a video on how to make one. Keep in mind, it's a faux dory. It's not a real Midori, obviously, because that's like a brand name of some sort, I suppose. I don't know much about it. Um, let's see. So... But I want to make one. It's like the Traveler's Notebook is what it's called. Um, you can remove the little booklets that are in it. Which is very cool. And I made mine. I don't know. They come like in standard sizes. But you can obviously customize it to whatever size you want. Which is what I did. I made it a size that would is big enough to write in and do what I want in it. But also it will fit in my purse easily you know I can take it with me easily without issue um, I think I will do one more of this pattern up here in the corner kind of going off of the thing and then I'm gonna do something else I'm gonna just do this over here on here anyway and then I'm gonna hit this with the heat gun actually I'm gonna move this out of the way for a split second come on cooperate and I'm going to get my book where's my book there's my book and I'm going to Take this, drop it here, and rub the paint off of it. Cool. I think I bent one of the things by accident. I'm dangerous. And then what I'll do is I'll take the rest of the paint that's in my brush and pounce it onto there in a couple places maybe I'll do this little little one here this paint goes a long way that's why I love it someday someday I'm gonna get the whole set but if you want it if you're interested um, like I said Amazon it's like $57 for the entire set of Dilusions paint, which is a really good deal, honestly, because you get like 12 colors, I think. So look at my hands. I got blood on my hands. So it's actually not a bad deal. Let me get this so I can clean my brush. I'll probably have to go into the bathroom and clean my stencil and my brush. That's what I'll do. I'll do that. I'm going to hit this with the heat gun so it'll be dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is dry and I got another stencil out and I've not used this one yet. I'm thinking I'm going to use this kind of pearl-esque um, shimmery kind of blue color to paint some of this on. I think there's two stencils here let's see what we got we've got a bird and like a butterfly I might do a combination and then we've got that butterfly and a rose and a key pretty stencils I like this bird I think I'm gonna do the bird initially randomly um, and see how that works out I'll use it from the cap and we'll make pretty. We'll make pretty. 
see how well this paint is. I know it's a very sheer paint, so it may or may not show up very well. So we'll just give it a try and see what happens. Yeah, it shows up okay. Not bad, not bad. I'll just try to keep it in spots where I, like, I'm not going to put it over the pink because it's probably so dark. I'll probably keep it over the lighter. I'll do it in different directions. Let me get some more paint on my brush. That's way too much. <laughs> okay, can't see that one too well. Let's try so I don't spill it. Go with it over here. Sounds good for that one. I just don't know where to put it down <laughs> without making a mess. Let me put it on my lap and try wiping it with a baby wipe while I clean off that brush. Ugh, I wish my baby wipes would freaking cooperate because this stupid thing, it's like the baby wipes don't like to come out very easily. They're being annoying. Very annoying. <laughs> yeah, this one I can, it's so small I can wipe it with a baby wipe and call it clean. I'm real picky about my stencils. So, nice and clean. So, let's see. Hopefully that paint will go into the cap. Not make a mess. Not to make a mess. Whoopsie. The way I have my paint situated in here drives me kind of crazy because I wish I had a better way of storing my paint so that I can get to it easier. That would be wonderful. As I have trouble finding what I want all the time. Let's do, let's see, I want to do yellow. Hmm. I had this green out. Maybe I'll do this green. Let me hit the heat gun on the little birds to make sure I don't smear them. metallic green and one of my favorite well I don't want to use that one yet let's see what else do I have what about oh I know how about some gears let's do some gears in metallic green we'll give it a try let me get my pouncy brush out of the water. Oh, it made the water all shimmery and pretty. I also make uh, I also make and sell homemade brush cleaner. Um, it's all organic and it works really well with keeping your brushes clean and soft. And you can also use it as a hand soap. Because that's originally what I made it for and then I discovered how well it cleaned my brushes. Now, of course, it's not going to clean your brushes if you've left the paint sitting on there for hours and it's all dried to a crust. Nothing is really going to help that other than like a, a, a solvent of some sort. But um, as far as uh, 
like you know you just put your brush in water and then you want to take it and clean it I put some in my hand the soap and I do this and then I you know rinse it off and that stuff really works well shockingly I uh, you know was shocked that how well it works so if anybody's ever interested in that as a brush cleaner um, I also sell that as well um, and it's it's a foaming brush cleaner and you'd have to have your own dispenser because I don't have dispensers to put it in I just have con uh, jars to send it and you fill your own um, you fill your own foaming container you know like one of those foaming things that you would get from the grocery store I'm running out of paint very quickly. I have to look into getting some foaming soap um, containers. I've seen some, which I think um, maybe eventually I will get. And I'm not like a huge, you know, everything's got to be organic type of person. It's just, I found that this soap and stuff that I make just wound up, you know, just wound up that I ended up making it out of organic stuff, which ended up working really well. I just moved this stencil. Um, so it just worked out for me that way without even really trying <laughs> but I also found that when I would sell my soaps and stuff out at festivals or craft fairs people liked the fact that it was organic so that's why I kept doing it but also I found that I also liked it a lot I liked the way it smelled I liked the way it worked it just was ideal Okay, I'm going to go clean this stencil and my brush with my soap, <laughs> and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's nice and dry. Now, after we got a couple of colors um, stenciling in, now we're going to do some black and white work. Um, I usually finish off with some black and white. That just makes it, I don't know, makes it look good. So, I'm going to do some black dots and also I might do some black stamping with a foam stamp but we'll start off with the black dots the dots I'm just putting some paint on my craft mat to the left of me and I'm just going to go around randomly putting some dots. Keeping in mind that this is going to get cut up so you're not going to like see any one thing specifically. Um, you know a hole of anything really except for possibly where I do the journal um, when I make the journal cover so now I'm going to get some water so I can clean my pouncy brush it's easier to do this one since it's so short it's easier to do it in the small glass than it is in the big one soak a minute while I get a stomp. I've got my bag. This is what I use for jelly prints. I usually grab stuff out of here. There's all kinds of different texture and stuff. <laughs> There's just lots of stuff. So what I might do is some black flowers. I'm going to use up some of the paint that's here. I'm just going to 
kind of spread it around and maybe do a couple of flowers. Um, or attempt to do a couple of flowers. I like these little foam stamps. I just wish that they were easier to hold and easier to like put down without getting paint all over the place. That would be cool. Okay. And we'll do another half flower, partial flower there. And one right there. Okay, that looks good. Okay, I think that's enough black for now. So I've got all of this black over here that I'm going to try and sop up with a baby wipe. It's not a lot, it's just spread out. Spread out mess that I made over here. the heat gun to dry this for a minute. Okay, that should be dry enough. Now we're going to clean off the pouncy brush. As best that I can. Wipe it dry. Now I'm going to take this uh, Squiggles. I love this stencil. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to use white paint. If I can get the paint to cooperate, which half the time I can and half the time it's gloppy. <laughs> I don't know. This white paint has seen better days. I don't know. I have more white paint somewhere. I just don't have it around my general area right this split second. Another big glop is about to come out. This is, I guess, old. I don't know how old it is. I've had it forever. It definitely needs to be retired at this point. <laughs> I don't think I'm actually going to get much decent paint out of this anymore. I do, however, have it all over my fingers. And I can't get the lid back on. Come on. Jeez. Trying to think of anything else I might want to add. I kind of want to do these ones and zeros, but I'm trying to think if I want to do them in a different color. I was thinking like, well, I don't know if yellow would show up that well. I can do some in gold. We could try that. Why don't we do that? We'll try to we'll add some metallic gold and see how that works out. What do we think? We could try it in a small section. Oh, I'm gonna have to break into this water. Because these pouncy brushes, they get loaded with paint because you're pushing and pushing that paint in so they get, they're harder to clean. This is the Deco Art Traditions paints. I generally wouldn't use this for this, I would use a cheaper paint, but it's what I have right in front of me. So, we're going to use it. Oh, 
that's cute. It's very subtle. I like that. I really like that. It looks good. It's going to be hard for you to see probably, but it looks really good. So we're going to do a lot more of it because it's nice and subtle and it gives it this, just a really nice metallic, the perfect amount of metallic for this. Because it kind of sits nice into the background a little bit. Yeah, I like it. I like it, I like it. I really like this. I really like this color, this metallic on here a lot. That's why I'm going crazy. It's perfect. A little bit more and then we're done. It's hard to flip this around with one hand. <laughs> I think this area here needs it. I think I have just enough on my brush. Hit this. Let's see. What else? I'm just using up what's on the brush now. <laughs> I really like that. It really looks good to me that tied everything together. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this out of the way as best I can. I'm going to get my book flip it open to whatever page that has like some spots and go ahead and get rid of the excess paint throw that in the, my basin over here and then just go in and put some metallic paint on the page Yeah, these brushes hold a lot of paint. Okay, let's see what we got for a finished product. Because I think, aside from a little bit of doodling that I might do, um, and what I have to do the doodling with is, um, I have a fine line bottle with white paint, and then I have this other bottle with a metal fine line with black paint and believe it or not I actually like this bottle better than a fine liner which is much more expensive and these bottles you can get these for like 20 for a dollar on eBay and it's got them it's got to have the metal tip and the little cap to go on it but these work fantastic as little paint bottles they really do so that's an idea because you can get like 20 of them fill a whole bunch of your favorite colors and do all kinds of doodling and that's what I plan on doing. I haven't gotten any more. I only have this one but I looked into it. I saw how much they were compared to this one which is much more expensive. But since I have it I'm going to use it obviously. And the nice thing is is you could take these bottles and draw you know like I can take it and let me make sure everything's going to come out okay. I can do like little dots in all of the flower petals, which makes a cute little doodle. And then do a a white center and what I'll do is I'll go back in with some black dots on that. So I'll do that to the flowers. I'll speed through it so that you don't have to sit through me doing that. Okay now I'm gonna take the black one which I'll show you how this one works. Um, and maybe I'll do some, maybe I'll do some like swirlies. Like that. Maybe I'll bring this one around just a little more. 
And then I'll go back to here. And put dots inside the flowers. Like I said, I like this one better. I can hold it better. I can control it better. And it's easier. The bottle's squishier than the other one. So I seem to have better, I don't know, I like it better. And plus I like that it's small, so if you change your mind and want a different color, it's not going to be that big of a deal um, to empty it out. And the cap seems to work. I've had it for over like a week and it's not clogged at all or anything. And so then we can go back and do some, uh, let's see, we can do some... Just some funky lines. go back further and put some little dots you can do whatever you want You're, it's your doodle it's your imagination You don't have to do any of this. <laughs> you can just stop wherever you want on yours. But since I like to go all out, you know me, I don't half-ass anything. Everything's got to be done to completion. I think it's looking good. You're looking really cute. Cute, cute, cute. I love it. I think um, at this point, though, I am done with it. What do you think? Now we just need to let it dry. And then I'll decide where I want to cut out the cover of my book. And I'll show you how we cut up the cards. Well, basically, I'll show you what it looks like after I cut it up. Well, let's let it dry and see what it looks like. Crap. I accidentally did that, didn't I? Let me see if I can't fix that. I got a baby wipe. I can get to it. There we go. I must have stuck my arm in it. There we go. All better. As long as it's still slightly wet, you can use a baby wipe to clean it up. Okay, so let's let this dry and come back to it, and then we'll see what we're going to do next. So, be back in a minute. Okay, so this is what we got. All done. The only thing I did off camera, and because I, I only did for a second, was I took this stamp with the music notes and I just did a couple faint um, little stamps on it. That's all I did just because I had it and I thought, oh, maybe. Let me see what it looks like. So I didn't do very much of it. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. I'm not going to do it on camera because, uh, you know, you guys know how to cut. <laughs> I'm just going to cut what I want out of it for a, another Midori style journal and then I'm going to make more of, you know, more ATCs with it I guess because, you know, I think they came out cute and I really like them so I want to make more um, and finish up the ones that I have. So hopefully I will do a video on the Midori thing and hopefully I will get to a video on the ATCs of decorating them and showing you what they look like. I think this came out really cool. 
um i'm excited to play with it don't you think it came out cool it's very funky but cut up you got to understand you know when it's cut up you only get pieces of each little area, so it's not gonna look this busy, like like these, you know? You get like pieces, so they just kinda look like a really cool kind of background. So if you do this, don't freak out like, oh my God, it looks like, you know, so gaudy, it's so busy. But look what happens when you cut it out. It just kinda gives this really funky kind of pattern to it, and it looks really cute for an ATC. You don't have to do much more to this for it to be an ATC to either give to somebody or whatever. You can just add like, like I did like words or add like a little flower, something like that, a little die cut and you can call it done and sign the back and do whatever you're gonna do with it. So and it's really fun to do. Or like I said, you know, go ahead and make, um, make a journal. You can make one like this, how cute, you know, or you can make it bigger. You can make a bigger journal. You know, if you really like your pattern, you can make a, you know, a pillow out of it or something, or you could do other sewn, things with it you know you could do it however you want so I hope you really enjoyed this and because I had a lot of fun I really love this I think it came out so awesome I almost like it better than this one um, but see the colors are the same so this kind of fits in it kind of fits in with this background it's not the same but it fits in with it I think it's cool so I hope you guys like it and I hope you guys make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people and let me know in the comments what you think, if you're going to give it a try. Um, what's your favorite color out of all this? What do you think will look cool? Um, and what would you use it for? What would you use this for? Tell me what you think you would use this for. So, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! Love ya! Oh yeah, one more thing. If any of you want to trade a couple of ATCs, let me know in the comments. If you make this and want to do some AC or even if you don't make this just any ATCs that you make maybe maybe we can trade like three so put a comment or actually email me don't put a comment I mean you can put a comment but email me ultimately um, you can leave a comment and then email me any way you want to do it just email me because my brain ugh, um, lately email me pinkpoodlecrafts at gmail.com and you know I'll uh, I'll the first couple people that um, respond will trade ATCs um, and how I'm gonna work it is that you send to me this way I can just return to you you know what I'm saying it's easier that way for me because I've got so much going on all at once all the time so what I'll do is I'll give you my address you send yours and then it's when I when I get yours I'll send I'll send yours out this way it'll be easier for me to keep track of what I'm doing I'll send them out as I get them um, so yeah, so I just thought of that and wanted to add that in. Talk to you guys later. Bye.